pollutants. Um, this coalition is also known as CCAC. As Federico mentioned um, in this webinar, we'll be talking about how to make municipal waste projects uh, su sustainable financially. Uh, this webinar, as uh, other webinars that are organized by the Waste Initiative, are geared towards helping cities improve their waste management and reduce short-lived climate pollutants to mitigate climate change and also improve air quality. Um, the initiative is working with its partners and um, to help cities and countries address the waste challenges that generate methane and black carbon. Uh, as you can see in the slides, there are proven solutions to these challenges with multiple benefits. Many municipalities can incorporate these solutions in their waste management plans. And one of the solutions, you know, um, it, in order to mitigate short-lived climate pollution are, are shown here. And also um, for this, we also need, you know, to make sure that these projects are sustainable in the future. So that's why it's so important this webinar today. Before we get started, actually, I would like to introduce our presenters today. Um, our main presenter will be Samir Dandun. Samir is in charge of the marketing and development function for waste within Swiss treatment infrastructure of uh, Swiss International. The division of Swiss is dedicated to design and delivery of treatment plans. As the coordinator uh, with, with the geographical business units of Swiss, uh, Samir has had a global vision of the trends shaping the waste manage, the waste treatment market worldwide, worldwide. He supports the business development staff in key territories and in particular in emerging countries. By bringing his knowledge of the technical process and financial and contractual models applicable to municipal waste treatment and recovery. Previously, um, Samir was the project manager for waste treatment solutions. As such, he managed many Swiss proposals for waste collection, treatment, and recovery under various models like uh, O&M, Turnkey, um, DBO, and also um, Design, Build, Finance, and Operate. Uh, most of the projects featured uh, in that he has worked on has been dump site remediation works, decontamination of waters and soils, design of solution for biogas and leachate treatment, or recovery and implementation of mechanical and thermal processes. We also have on the line uh, Lauren Poor. Uh, he will be supporting Samir during the Q&A session. Um, Lauren is in charge of the portfolio management, structurization, partnership and development of large and complex PPP built to operate transfer projects that um, Swiss has developed worldwide. Um, so with this brief introduction, actually I'll go ahead and get, uh, turn the presentation to Samir. So Samir, if you can go ahead and share your screen, that would be great. Yeah, so, so the, the content of this, of this webinar um, is basically a return on experience on the projects we implemented in emerging countries uh, waste projects. The first part would be a short introduction of our business, especially in the waste sector. We will then have a part about, uh, more theoretical about the business models and the PPP uh, experience that we have. We will then focus on real business cases and you would see uh, different countries and different technologies implemented. And then we will conclude and try to open a discussion for questions and answers. So very briefly, Suez, who are we? Uh, we manage uh, water Sorry, cycle. Sorry, I, I apologize for interrupting. This is Zach Tofius from C40. I think that in, in, on the Zoom, you have selected uh, a different um, PowerPoint okay. window to share, as we are still looking at your introduction slide. So if you can exit out of your presentation and then reselect, uh, uh, Reselect the, uh, the screen that you would like to share. Okay. As you have not advanced, I think that that the way that Zoom is set up, you can select a. Um, so we are now looking at our fields of activity slide. And I would go full screen, and you tell me is it full screen? I saw you click it, but it did not change on our screen. So I think. Yes. That 
this might, I, I might suggest that you then exit out of the full screen as it is not working for the rest of our viewers, but just continue. Um, okay, so if I, if I try like yesterday, I try to share the, the full, the in, okay, the whole screen here like this, maybe it would be better. Uh, and then I go to here and... Parfait, perfect. Excellent. Perfect, okay, sorry. Okay, so let's go back. It's just the presentation of our business. So we're very active in the water sector. Um, uh, today, topics would be recycling and waste recovery sector where we are very active too. And also treatment infrastructure. Treatment infrastructure is the division Laurent and I belong to. Uh, as Sandra introduced, we manage projects from the development phase till commissioning, and we cover construction, technology, operation, and finance components of projects, as you will see along the presentation. And finally, uh, we conceive also solutions for smart cities. Uh, key figures about the Suez Group, uh, we now have the final figure for years uh, 2018, so we have a global turnover in excess of 17 uh, billion euros. Uh, we have 90,000 employees worldwide on five continents, and we also address industrial customers. Our business breakdown is roughly 50-50 uh, share between uh, waste and water. So now a focus on waste management. Um, we, as an operator, uh, those figures show that we manage 33 million tons in waste collection, and we manage uh, more than 43 million tons for treatment. When we have a look at treatment technologies, um, we have uh, 20 million tons that we treat into MRF, uh, being uh, sorting centers, uh, recycling centers. 16 million tons per year in sanitary landfilling, but this business is decreasing, especially in Europe. 8 million tons in thermal treatment. Uh, 4 million tons in biological treatment, like anaerobic digestion, composting plants. And 3 million tons uh, for hazardous waste treatment with uh, physical and chemical treatment and thermal treatment again. So it was just to give you an overview of a uh, the scope of our activity. Now if I go um, into the, the topic, uh, our experience in PPP, uh, private, uh, public and private partnership, and the models that we are uh, implementing. Samir, I think that, that we might have lost your video screen. Yeah, can confirm that you are no longer sharing, uh, Samir. Could you try sharing again, please? Yeah. So stop sharing. Okay, share screen again. Share. Is it okay? No, no, we cannot see your screen at the moment. Let me check again. I can share my screen and then um, and then um, Samir, you can use you can just tell me when to pass if you want to do that. If we can, maybe that's the best. Yeah, I'm. Okay. Uh, that will probably work. Yes. Okay, let me do that. Thank you, Sandra. And apologies, everyone else, for the technological uh, issues. Okay, okay, so you can see Sandra's screen now. And you are in this, which slide were you on? Acronyms and definition. Okay, there you go. So it's just a page where you can find the main acronyms I will use during the presentation. Uh, most of them are financial acronyms like BOO, BOT, DB. I won't go through all of them. Maybe you have a few seconds to, to, to read, but the thing I want to say here is uh, in our business, in waste management and waste recycling, uh, addressing construction and operation in one single package is really 
what will guarantee sustainable performance of the project. So that's why you will see uh, we will favor models including O&M, uh, i.e. operation and maintenance, uh, along with design and build. So next page, the models in which Suez operates. Uh, you can see uh, on this graph there are mainly four models. Uh, I will give a few definitions, uh, but really sectorial definitions. Um, and sometimes definitions are different when you are out of the waste sector. Um, I will start with the two extreme cases. Uh, bottom left, uh, management contract. Uh, management contract is a model where we intervene as a, let's say, as a technical advisor during operation. Uh, so this is not really what is needed at the moment for the waste sector in emerging countries because we need to invest to have a sound infrastructure. Uh, on the opposite, uh, at the top uh, right of the graph, concession models um, are models where we are in direct contact with the end users, we invoice the end users. So this is uh, mostly a model uh, for the water sector. This is not really applicable to, to waste sector, so I will not cover it. I will really focus on the two models in the center. Uh, first of all, the DBO, Design, Build, Operate, is a model where uh, infrastructure construction costs are paid for by the client. Uh, so the investment and the risk for the private sector is rather low. The second model in the, in the middle, Build, operate transfer uh, are the model we implement in the context of project finance. Uh, project finance models are self-sustainable business model where the private sector invests uh, along with bankers uh, to have a, a, self, a, a project uh, that is self-financed and that bring relief uh, to the public government um, investment capacity. So that's uh, this model of BOT that we will, uh, that we will discuss a lot uh, during this presentation. Next page, Infra infrastructure PPP developed by Suez. So you can see uh, the map here of, of the world. So as a developer, uh, Suez um, developed uh, water projects worldwide for dozens of years and we developed PPP in waste in the last 20 years, uh, starting in Western Europe, uh, mainly uh, England, France, uh, Northern Europe. And we have started to develop uh, in Eastern Europe uh, with Poland, and we will focus on this. The idea uh, here on this slide is something we want to stress on is the interest of having a grant component in our projects, and we will explain all over this presentation, how grants help to make a uh, waste infrastructure project more sustainable. So next page, uh, definitions of two concepts that are key to understand the issues in waste management today, um, bankability and affordability of waste projects. We usually start to assess uh, bankability at the beginning of project. Bankability is the overall project context and uh, components, and this analysis is aimed at assessing the bank's appetite for financing the project, and the bank's appetite for financing the project finally result in the cost of this financing. Many drivers are taken into account by the banks, we can ask many questions like, how mature is the technology implemented? Is the technology adapted to the waste composition? Uh, how strong is the business case and uh, all the contracts around the project? Are cash flows guaranteed? And finally, how experienced is the infrastructure operator? So this bankability um, analysis leads us to the second concept, the affordability. Um, here in affordability, we focus on the actual remaining operational cost of the solution for the local budget. Will it fit in the local budget? How wide is the gap between the required budget and the local capacity? 
and how can we reduce this gap? And these answers, uh, these questions we will answer during the presentation by seeing uh, actual business case. Next page, uh, return on experience, emerging solutions for emerging countries. Uh, after a few projects in uh, emerging countries and many attempts that did not concretize, unfortunately, we can now see emerging solutions based on four dimensions. Project sustainability. Sustainability means uh, viability and maturity of the project context. Is there a real environmental need, uh, environmental emergency? Are there local regulations pushing in favor of the project? And are all stakeholders aligned? So this is really the analysis of the context. Second, the technical solutions. We really look at two aspects of the technical solution. Is it adapted to the waste composition, the local waste composition. It's important to remind that a technology cannot work everywhere. Second question about the technical solution. Is it adapted to the construction and operation budget of the client? That's also a driver of choice. Then the business model. There are three requirements here. In emerging countries, it's clear that the waste sector needs grants to reach affordability. So that's what we will see with, uh, with the business cases. Investors and banks must participate to bring equity and debt because there's not so much capacity available locally. And finally, in the business model, the contract must be long-term to make sure the infrastructure produce long-term performance in the interest of all stakeholders. Number four, bankability. The banks want to secure the cash flows of the project. Um, so this safety uh, need is based uh, on strong commitments uh, of all stakeholders in the project. And a strong operator with strong references uh, will be a guarantee to, to really secure this long-term performance. So this is a summary of what we learned in the last 10 years, more or less. Next page, uh, we'll go here before going to the business case into really the, uh, the financial uh, analysis of the models. On this slide, you can see two models. On the left part, DBO. On the right part, DBFOM models. There are many models that you can call DBFOM. On the left side, DBO, design, build, operate. This is a model where the client finance the construction. Construction is the DB phase, design and build. He can finance DB on his own funds, on debt or on ground. Then the remaining operation and maintenance tariff, this is the, 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 the chart, the bar that you can see for the 10 year period, usually those DBO contracts, they go over between five to 10, to 10 year O&M period. So this tariff during the 10 year period is finally composed of the remaining operating costs, like for example, staff, maintenance, uh, chemical and reagent products, fuel and energy, all the costs that you need uh, to have a plant working. The issue is with DBO that Often, uh, waste is not the main priority of authorities. So clients prefer to have debts for other sectors of the economy. Hence, the importance of the second models, the DBFOM type models. DBFOM stands for Design, Build, Finance, Operate, and Maintain. In those models, uh, the project preparation phases are really keys uh, to produce a bankable context and to raise private debts at lower cost, as I was saying before. Uh, you can see the, that the thickness uh, or the height of the O&M tariff is different in this model. Uh, it's on purpose because in this model, the operational tariff uh, will include uh, the financing cost, the amortization of assets and the financing cost. All of this can represent until 
50% of the, of the overall tariff. So what we're trying to say here is, if we can get grants to cover a big share of the DB, like 50% of the capex, of the construction cost, it will reduce tremendously the tariff, the final o &M tariff, and makes it affordable uh, by reducing the amount of private debt and of equity from the private sector. So that is where IFI, so the international financial institution and the multilateral development bank like the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, African Development Bank, this is where we really expect them in waste project to bring the grant component in the DB phase to have a, a lower tariff in O&M and so to increase affordability of projects. So having said that, even when we talk about the remaining operational cost uh, of the tariff, there are challenges because the gap between a dump site operational cost, which is close to nothing, maybe $2 or $3 ton, and the cost of operating a sanitary landfill is already huge. It can be three times more expensive, even without the financial cost. So next page. Again, uh, Suez Rex, Emerging Solutions. This slide is about showing uh, the cost recovery actions in the BFOM model, or the cost recovery resources that we have. How to recover um, this cost, uh, and how to have this new tariff burden to be uh, lighter on, on the municipal budget. So the basis of the cost recovery for all waste projects is the available municipal budget for waste management. Or rather, I would say the remaining parts of waste budget once they have collected waste, because waste budgets always go first to collection. So what's the remaining part for treatment? That's the first question. Then here again, our experience finally uh, result that we we know we need, again, uh, aid from IFI, from development banks, to um, cover these very operational costs. Uh, as we said, um, this operational cost will be higher than the municipal budget when the municipality used to operate a dump site. So we have witnessed in some very, very local examples that IFI can help in providing loans for O&M just for a few years, uh, just to give time to the client, to the authorities, to structure uh, their cost recovery system and get to have a sustainable municipal budget when finally the citizens, when they see the benefits of a new infrastructure for waste, they are more willing to pay new taxes. So the basis of this is really uh, the perception of the value of a, of a sound waste treatment. So on top of this municipal budget and of the potential help from, from development banks, there are other drivers that we can activate. Energy revenue is a very classical one. You can produce energy from uh, landfill gas, from anaerobic digestion, from uh, thermal plants. And here, the job of project developers like us is really to develop uh, the local conditions uh, to, again, to make banks um, um, comfortable with the contractual conditions. And uh, the objective here is to have a cost of, of energy that is uh, sustainable and will allow uh, the municipality to pay less amount of money for the tipping fee. We will see that with uh, real examples. And finally, and this is uh, a thing we have to develop, and we are on the learning curve on this, is all the thing about climate finance, green finance, carbon credits, and so on. Uh, waste sector is really on the learning curve, and uh, we think it makes a lot of sense to develop our knowledge of, this, of these devices to get money from climate finance in the waste sector. So that was the, the introduction uh, about, let's say, the, the financial model. 
I will now go to uh, real business cases. And I mean, I'm uh, here, waste business cases in emerging countries. Uh, uh, can you see this table? So we have at the top of the table a benchmark. Uh, a benchmark is a project we developed years ago uh, for water. Um, it's called Samra in Jordan, and this is a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we'll go directly to this next page. Uh, the interest of this project, it, it's like it's, it's more than 10 years ago, uh, it was in the context of the um, Millennium Challenge Corporation, so US foreign aid. And it, it was a, uh, it, it's really what we would like to reproduce for waste. Uh, so this is wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you can see in this project, Shrez was a developer, uh, a builder, and uh, an operator, and is still an operator of the project. And what really made this project sustainable is the grant component, as I was saying. Uh, almost 50% of the construction cost uh, was donated uh, by, by the MCC. And it was really a, a momentum uh, for, for other uh, private sector uh, finances, especially the banks, that followed us on the project. And uh, this project was already, let's say, a climate project uh, because we could develop with this money uh, systems of water reuse. Um, we reuse uh, the, 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 water, the, the treated water for irrigation purpose on this site. And also we developed renewable energy system based on the sludge uh, anaerobic digestion, the biogas from sludge. So this is a model that, that works, and we would like basically to try to reproduce this model in the waste sector. So I will give you a few examples based on our experience. Next page is uh, Saida in Lebanon. This is the site remediation project. I'll be fast on this one. Just to show that a ground cannot do everything. Uh, this was a, a dump site on the Mediterranean Sea, polluting the sea and polluting the neighboring countries. Uh, it was 100% financed by a grant. The problem is a grant cannot replace a master planning. There was no master planning. Uh, so the scope of the project was too narrow. And if, if you know a bit about Lebanon, we know there's a lot of issues with waste, waste management in Lebanon. So the issue there is we managed a wonderful project. We cleaned the shore, we sorted the waste and so on, thanks to a grant from UNDP. But if you don't manage dump site remediation and a sustainable solution at the same time, you don't solve problems. So that's the message from this page that the grant cannot do anything. Second example, <clears throat> Morocco, Meknes. Again, we start with a dump site. As many people um, hearing are from emerging countries, so we know there are a lot of dump sites still, and this is always the first step of the project how to get rid of this dump site and how to replace it by something sustainable. Here in Morocco, it was a, a nice approach because to remediate the dump site, we know that it's a, a lot of costs of works costs that you have to cash out in like two years and that municipalities cannot afford. So the ground component is really uh, a must when you have to manage dump site projects. In this case of Morocco, uh, there was a specific national fund. Uh, they made a donation to cover the cost of remediation. So it was out of the municipal budget. And it seems that this specific fund, it was in the backstage, it was funded by the World Bank. Then about the sustainable solution. Um, the success factor in this project is that the municipality was very aware of their financial limitations and they chose a technology uh, that was affordable for them, i.e. sanitary landfill with biogas and nitrate management. So that's what we designed and we designed it to, to really enter into, into the budget. There was a, another interesting uh, interesting aspect to this project was the social aspect. Uh, in many dump sites in the world, there are informal waste pickers. So we have we had to uh, help uh, the authorities to to make 
these formal activities a formal one. And we included in our project this aspect by building sorting premises and by integrating those informal workers into our project. So as we will see, waste projects are not just only technical and financial projects, but also social projects. So other projects, uh, next project, this is, this is not a stress site, this is Bogota in Colombia. This is just a technical assistance mission. I just would like to highlight uh, one fact here, is uh, the, the fact that um, when you start uh, a new contract with a private operator, uh, you, as, a, as an authority, you have to be aware of the real cost of things. This situation was a bit strange in Colombia because Bogota was one of was the landfill with the lowest gate fee of the whole country. So we were just approached to give a technical opinion about uh, the local operator, and we found we found that the local operator was he was very competent technically, and given the, the price of the gate fee here, for example, it was something like six dollars per ton. Um, to give you an idea, in Morocco, the average price is, is more like 15 or 20 dollars per ton. So if you compare with Morocco, you see that there's something wrong. So here, uh, we gave this opinion and finally the authorities had made the good decision in the sense that they activated a um, levels to really revise the local taxation and they got the resources to vote a new tariff, a new uh, landfill, uh, a new tariff to cover the landfill cost from a raise uh, in the joint utility bill. So the joint utility bill in Colombia covers waste, uh, wastewater and, and drinking water. By just a raise of 3%, just 3% of the joint utility bill, they could cover uh, the new cost of the landfill. And by memory, I think, the gate fee was multiplied by two. And that's what really necessary for, for technical reasons. So sometimes a nice sanitary landfill can turn into a dump site just because uh, local authorities uh, don't have uh, the, the financial capacity to cover the real operational cost. So I, I'm finished with, let's say, the basic models, uh, the models of landfilling. I will go now to more advanced technologies. The next page is about Poland. Uh, this project is um, seven years old, uh, I mean in development, and we commissioned it like three years ago, and we have now uh, three years of operation, more or less. Uh, Poland, um, Poland used to develop their infrastructure based on grants from the European Union. Uh, the model they returned at the beginning was a model with only um, construction uh, for the private sector and then they operated the plants with municipal teams. This project in Poznan uh, was the first one where they wanted to, to, um, to, to have a private operator for um, mainly for performance reasons. Uh, moreover, um, the city of Poznan didn't want to invest their own funds so they wanted a, a project finance system. So as I said, the project fi I said at the beginning, project finance means that the project is self-sustainable, that it produces enough cash flows uh, for banks to be, uh, to be secured about the model and to bring the necessary debt. So in this, this project was standard under a competitive dialogue. I think it was the year 2011. And uh, Suez and partners uh, won, and our role in the project was to be a developer, uh, a builder, a financier, and an operator. Uh, so as I said, there was a subsidy from the European Union to cover, uh, to cover, uh, I think maybe 20 or 30 percent of the construction cost. Uh, we could get uh, local banks uh, financing the project. Uh, we put equity ourselves, of course. And, uh, and uh, the municipal tax uh, recovery was, was enough to, to, to pay the tipping fee. What 
um, made this uh, project viable uh, is the following. First of all, the competitive dialogue. Uh, competitive dialogue is a way of procurement where the client uh, proceeds into uh, many steps and he, he is open to the private sector uh, proposals in terms of uh, conception, technologies, financial model, guarantees, and so on. This is a, a co-construction of the solution with the private sector. Uh, the, the financing model was viable and transparent. Uh, it was a, yeah, this project was really a transparent one. Uh, we committed in an internal rate of return of the project that was known from the beginning. And, uh, and uh, when, for example, we, we got the European Union subsidy and we were refunded from a part of the construction cost, we had to lower our get fee just to maintain the same IRR. So this is a this is a really a, a proof of transparency for for this project. Now the other um, key success factor is the risk allocation. As we said in in BOT model, uh, fair risk allocation is the key to success. Um, there's um, Many, many guarantees that we got from this project. For example, uh, the municipality accepted to pay us a fixed financing fee. Uh, they accepted also a fixed operating fee to cover the cost of labor, of maintenance. So that means as an operator, we, our risk on the tonnage was not so much. Uh, and this is, this allows us to, to build a price that with, let's say, less provisions for risk. So this is also a good deal for the authorities. And uh, the only one of the only guarantees we had to, to give to the municipality was uh, about the energy production. So this is our know-how as an operator to really guarantee that our way of operating and given also the nature of the waste uh, will produce uh, sufficient electricity for the city. We're talking here about uh, a waste to energy plant, energy from waste. So um, they wanted us to produce the energy, so electricity for the grid and heat for the district network. And the municipality, they wanted to manage uh, these flows of revenues. They negotiated directly with the electricity company and the heating uh, the heating network. Uh, those revenues are not in our business model. Now, if I go to the next project, uh, Serbia, Belgrade, it's a bit similar, but it's also very different. Again, this is a waste to energy plant. The difference is here we started with a dump site again. And this is very original because we remediate this dump site without a grant. Here, we, the competitive dialogue, again, uh, allowed us to find solution to, to take this um, remediation cost inside our business model. That means we accepted to amortize the cost of, of uh, the remediation. We accepted to do so because the authorities, they gave uh, sufficient guarantees and, uh, and uh, sufficient uh, yes, financial guarantees to um, to operate. Uh, for example, in this project, and unlike Poznan, we were in charge of uh, uh, the relations with the heating district network and the electricity company. You can see on the slide the prices of energy. Uh, this is what the high prices, and you can see the guarantees: 12 years for power, 25 years for heat. So when we have this kind of guarantees in our business model, uh, of course, it makes the business model stronger. So it makes the cost of debt lower. Uh, it makes also our risk management policy uh, uh, cheaper than if we had higher risk. So all of this contribute to uh, having a lower cost of treatment for the municipality. Um, another driver we had to activate was uh, the tax recovery in Belgrade. Uh, 
uh, we realized during the competitive dialogue that even with the cost of electricity and the cost of heat, we would not be able to propose a gate fee that would be affordable for the municipality. So there was this work of analyzing this, uh, the tax system in Belgrade, and they realized again that by do, by making the, month, the amount of the waste collection, the waste treatment tax uh, doubled, they could cover, um, they could, we could lower the gate fee till the affordability limit of Belgrade. And for the households, it represented only, uh, the new tax represented only 1% of their annual revenue. And the amount, it's 55 euro per year, was the same as in uh, neighboring Croatia. So it was not, uh, I mean, it, it was not, um, it was acceptable uh, to the uh, to the um, the householders. Finally, another word about the competitive dialogue here. At the beginning of this project, uh, the the first specification at round one of competitive dialogue was to build an MBT and an energy from waste. Uh, we the client promptly realized that it was not affordable. There was too much capex to finance, and especially for MBT, the banks were not easy with the business model. Uh, the quality of the products of the recyclables uh, were, was not enough to guarantee uh, cash flows over the long term. So the competitive dialogue, again, allowed uh, the private sector to make um, different proposals, different scenarios, technical scenarios and economic scenarios to reach the affordability level uh, of the city. Final case, uh, Thailand, Chonburi. I'll be fast on this one. Um, this is a new type of project where the project is not labelized as a waste project, but as a power project. And uh, we take uh, a, merchant plant, uh, a merchant plant model here. That means we are owner, we make all the investments, and we have to go and get the tonnage from the private sector. And by getting the tonnage from the private sector, you bring relief to the municipal site. And uh, we live on the tipping fee of the private waste generators and on the fee that the electric company pays us. That this is why this is a, a power project. But this is, this is brand new and uh, we are learning in, in this. I will now conclude and um, to leave room for, for question and answer. So finally, what, what's a good municipal waste project? That's a project where the regulation context is clear and it allows fair market competition to bring innovation to the client. Um, that's a, a project where we have the highest possible grant to cover construction in order to reach the affordability uh, the affordability of the client. This is a project where the O&M cost of the selected technology is in line with the local capacity. Of course, a sanitary landfill will be more affordable than uh, energy from waste or an MBT. And this is a, a project where we have a strong business case regarding third party revenues. So it's really important uh, that local authorities are able to bring around the table the, the, all the other stakeholders like uh, Ministry of Energy or Electricity Company or Heating District Company and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, the bankability of project is validated by banks based on, um, let's say, uh, transparency of and, um, and the guarantees of, that the contract uh, can bring. And the final word uh, about climate finance, I was saying at the very beginning of the presentation um, that climate finance should be a booster for waste project bankability. Uh, next year, a lot uh, countries will have to close their uh, nationally determined contribution to the global effort of fighting uh, global warming as per the Paris Agreement. So the only question I would ask here to all of you, have you have has your country included waste sector actions in the NDC? And I think uh, that.
that's and that's the topic of Federico and Sandra in their in their daily job, I think. And that's something as a waste operator we would like to contribute to, uh, because we think this is a source of financing for the waste sector. So thank you. I'm I'm done for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samir, for a very, very interesting uh, presentation. Well, I enjoyed all of it, but the case studies were definitely very, very insightful, and I think they were for a lot of the joining us. So we are running a little bit late. So without uh, further ado, we'll start jumping into some of the questions that were written in the, uh, in the chat box. Uh, if, if you prefer uh, uh, asking your questions verbally, you can just uh, mute, uh, unmute yourself at, uh, at any time. Um, and, and Sandra, of course, feel free to jump in at, at any time. So we have a first question. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right from Tevir Singh. Um, it's more of a, a, a question on selecting the treatment technology when waste is not segregated at source. So uh, some, some, some overall suggestions on what the overall uh, preferred technology could be within a non-segregated uh, waste context, Samir. So, yeah, you're talking about non-segregated. Uh, so it makes my, my answer easier. If it's yes. non-segregated, obviously you will go to very robust technologies like uh, landfilling or energy from waste and still energy from waste you have to make sure you have sufficient calorific value even in the unsegregated waste uh, but uh, yes i mean the you're right segregation is the key if you want to implement advanced technology you have to go through this first path of segregating the flows Absolutely. I think that as a general consideration, it's important to uh, stress that if you have a, a composition that is very high in organics, in wet waste, then your calorific value is quite low. Uh, so ex you, you will not be able to extract a lot of energy from your waste if a lot of your waste, if your waste mix is mainly uh, organic. Uh, we have a question from Martina asking us to show the, the, the map from the beginning, but uh, due to time reasons, we might do that. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, but this, this presentation will be available uh, uh, later on. on, the, uh, on uh, Sandra will be talking about this just to conclude on where the presentation will be uh, uploaded. Uh, Yek Boon, again, I apologize if I'm not uh, pronouncing names correctly. Can you please explain what an escrow account is? Uh, would you like to do this, Samir, or? Okay. Nice so, sorry? An escrow account. An, an, an uh, escrow, escrow. Uh, escrow account. Ah, an escrow account is just a kind of, of guarantee fund to make sure that, you know, the money that is paid for the waste sector will go to the waste sector, to the waste operator. So that's the thing that uh, we developed in Belgrade, uh, where they had to set up this new tax or the new amount of the tax. And they, there is a specific tax collector. Uh, it's an organization who guarantees that the amount taken from this tax, it will go to the waste plant and not to, I don't know, the road or the water or other sector of the yeah. municipal budget. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a third party that holds on to the money to make sure that it will actually go to the person once the job is completed satisfactorily. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. Constantino. Sorry. Yeah, if you want, Laurent, Laurent has just assisted me in writing that, okay, an escrow account is... He wrote it so you can read on the right, on the yeah. right part, on the, the chat has, box. Laurent has provided a more technical answer, definitely. Um, yeah. Moving on to Constantinos. Uh, is there an example of a viable, financially sustainable project based on a material recovery facility? And what are the key factors in that project? Yeah. Yes, uh, we, have, we have a few, but as you, as you noticed, I didn't present one because it's not for the moment in emerging countries, but we have a few in Europe, obviously, where the MERF uh, are based on, on separated collection schemes. And uh, we have uh, 
I think what th there are two aspects to make uh, recycling viable. First, the quality of the input of the feedstock. It has, and the, the source segregation is a guarantee to have a clean feedstock. And the, the clean feedstock allows us to produce a clean product or a clean, uh, a clean intermediate product like granules, for example. And at the moment, um, in MRF, how MRF developed in the last 20 years in Europe is by producing, for example, bales, you know, bales of cardboard, bales of PET bottles, scrap metals, and so on. It's viable, yes, but sometimes it's less viable because those bales or those materials, they, 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 there's a market price that can vary tremendously. And uh, especially at the moment with all the bands, the China bands and the other Malaysia bands also, many, many countries were, uh, that, that used to transform this material into products, now they refuse to import them. So the variability, yes, is at stake. What are we going to do? So what we want to do now is go farther in the MRF industry. We really want, and, and that's what we're doing in a few plants, we produce a commodity from the waste. That means instead of producing bales of PET bottles, we would produce granulates of PET. And granulates of PET, you know, it's like $800 per ton on the market. So I think the viability of MRF will be higher uh, with uh, the, the sophistication of the technologies we implement in our MRF centers, but the conditions is the source segregation, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samir. Uh, while Samir was answering this question, uh, a poll, uh, some, some questions should have appeared on everyone's screen. We would be very grateful if, as we answer the questions, you could take a few seconds uh, to answer the questions. Um, in addition, if you have any other comments on the, on the webinar or any further topics that you would like to suggest for the next webinars, please include those in the chat, uh, in the chat box as well. So any comments and additional topics that you would like us to, to that you would like CCAC uh, webinar uh, on. Um, there is a com I'm going back to the chat box now uh, with Mihal uh, uh, making a point that absolutely uh, anaerobic digesters is a waste composition is wet organic. This I think refers to the question from Tabir before uh, where if you are. Yes. <coughs> but yes. again, the question, the question was about unsegregated waste. Absolutely. So anaerobic digestion. <laughs> So unsegregated waste is very difficult and uh, and uh, you would need to pretreat, you would need kind of MBT at front end and that's a lot of capex and I'm not sure this is, a, I'm not sure this is an affordable solution. Absolutely, yes. I mean, in, in the cities where we work, where, where I, I yeah. work personally as C40, we don't really have any successful uh, large-scale anaerobic digestion facilities. Delhi is starting to do some very interesting work and Rio de Janeiro opened uh, uh, the f a large-scale anaerobic digester that can process unsegregated waste but this is still a, a relatively new technology so as, as Samir was correctly stating segregation is, is absolutely key in, uh, in these projects to start. Um, we have uh, a question from Fanja from Madagascar. In my city, there was two priority of project reduction waste, remove, uh, remedy the dump site, two million. What is the priority to make a sustainable financing project? Um, Okay, so what what would you say uh, uh, in 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 relation to? Uh, waste segregation uh, project, uh, so to promote segregation, Samir, and for dump site remediation projects, what would you th say are the most important uh, financial aspects? If, if that's... If that's uh, ah, so you, there are two topics, you mean source segregation and dump site remediation, right? Yes, these are the two types of projects. Okay, okay. 
Uh, yeah, they are very linked for sure. Now, dumb cell remediation, I think, as I said during my presentation, it's huge works, huge cost. Uh, that's typically the type of project where some kind of solidarity should be implemented. A, a municipality alone cannot pay for the dump site remediation. And the impact of dump site, they don't limit to the borders of the municipality. So, as I said, that's where the grant component is necessary for, for dump site remediation. Um, and I, I think that I, I cannot see any other solution that, that grants or donation or specific financing. Then source segregation. Uh, <clears throat> source segregation, especially in emerging countries, we, we are seeing local initiatives that work well. And it can be formal or informal. Uh, um, some, you know, um, like micro collection or micro entrepreneurs for collection. Uh, uh, they collect, you know, in carts, they would collect uh, bottles, they would collect uh, aluminum cans, uh, they would collect, uh, well, food waste, not yet, but um, I, I think segregated collection for householders, um, yes, if the flows, the waste flow has a value, like you know, the bottle, uh, glass bottle, POT bottle, uh, aluminum cans, many things exist already, formal or informal. And I would be tempted to say, okay, we, we have to push the local entrepreneurs to develop this because you know, they know the cities. I mean, they know, they know the habits of the people and so on. And uh, I'm not sure this is uh, the place of, of, uh, of big corporations. Uh, we would really like to focus on the residual waste, and the residual waste is the waste which has no no value, no per se, like uh, like finally food waste. But even for food waste, I would say I have, I mean, I have no recommendation for financing source segregation now. But what I, I saw in my experience, what I've seen is that, for example, food waste in many cities, like second secondary cities in, in emerging countries, food waste is naturally recycled, for example, to feed the cattle, or uh, you have, they are composting yards in the farms and so on. So this kind of habits and, and customs, I mean, they, they, they are good, they are good because they, 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 they recycle uh, some, some share of the municipal waste. Uh, the, I think the issue about segregated collection, um, and source separation, we have it still in Europe, and it's a hot topic at the moment in Europe. And there, finally, there are two dimensions in the solution. First of all, the householders. Uh, we, as a citizens, we have to really feel involved. So that's a lot of, of communication, awareness campaign. For example, in Europe, we're gonna have, in uh, three years, or four years from now, we're gonna have a bin for food waste. So it would be a new thing. People will have to 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 get involved in this action and, and really sort their food waste at home. And the second the second pillar I, I see is the the industrial waste generators. And uh, at the moment, at the European Union level, we're talking about the extended uh, responsibility of producers. And how they 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 should organize themselves to collect their product or to have somebody collect them for themselves, but with you know uh, dedicated uh, routes collection routes to make sure that this recyclable potential is not mixed and is not mixed with uh, with with waste. So the financing of that, uh, if we talk about householders collection, it's another. Another burden for for municipal budget and uh, for uh, extended producer responsibility. The, the financing uh, relies on the private sector, and that's something uh, we're working at in Suez. We 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 really want to help the industrial waste generators in having a, a smarter design of the packaging. For example, make sure that all the plastic they use for the packaging is recyclable. Because this is not currently this is not the case. All plastics are not recyclable. 
and uh, and uh, we are so that's something we are working on and it, but it's it's recent at the European level uh, maybe many emerging countries they could make a, a leap you know and save time by inspiring uh, inspiring uh, from the the European Union directives especially when they have big industrial generators in their in their cities. I, I apologize for interrupting you, Samir, but we are we are uh, running a little uh, behind on the schedule. Uh, as we just go through the final last bits, could I uh, once again emphasize uh, that we would really appreciate if you could take a second to answer the poll questions. That should be on your screen right now. Um, I see that there have been, thank you very much, a couple of comments for additional webinar topics. One I wasn't so clear about, it was from uh, Martina De Marcos, who would like a seminar specifically on remote location. So I would ask Martina to elaborate a little bit on, on what she means by that. And in the me there was another topic suggested, thank you very much. And then uh, as you are answering the poll, I will um, I hand over the, 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 the floor back to Sandra for the final comments and to, to answer questions about the sharing of, the, of contacts and the videos and, and recordings and whatnot. Okay, thank you, Federico. Um, yes, um, yeah, there were several questions whether the presentations will be shared and in a recording. Yes, we will uh, share. Um, the we will post the webinar the recording of the webinar on youtube and also we'll share the link on the msw knowledge platform so here you can see the link the, the address of the knowledge platform it is www.waste.ccacalition.org and um yeah we'll post the, the recording and the presentation there also if you have uh, additional questions please go ahead and send them to me and i'll send them to samir and, uh, and then we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Well, lastly, I would actually like to give thanks again to Samir to, for, um, for, for the time to, to plan and, and present, and also to Federico and the C40 staff for hosting this webinar. And um, thank you very much for all the participants and for all your questions. I hope that you found this webinar uh, uh, useful. And then if you have uh, other topics, please go ahead and, and answer them in the, in the poll. If not, you can also send me an a a email with additional topics that you would like to see. Also on the knowledge platform, you can find other webinars that we have had in, in the past. So if you please go ahead and stroll through those and look at them. And if you have any questions about those webinars, then also please go ahead and send me an email. An email. Uh, so I think that's it for now. Uh, I, think, I don't think that uh, that's you it. have, are, yeah, right? Learning even over time, so apologies for that. Yes, yes apologies for the, the technical problems we had at the beginning, uh, but hopefully, um, you know, you, 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 you thought this uh, webinar was good enough to stick around, and thank you so much for that. So have a great day, and I hope you will join us in upcoming webinars. Take care. Thank you all very thank much. You. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, Sandra. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sam. Thank you all.